Kumble, Srinath, Raju, and Sharma. Well, let's join play now. And today, your commentators are Soil Gavaskar and Tony Kosia. Very quick to seize on the loose ball. Yes, too short and too wide. And Williams, like all West Indian batsmen, very, very strong on his back foot. He could not give a West Indian batsman a short ball and also give him width at the same time. Stuart Williams really has had a very good run. He's been one of the finds of the tour early days he had a force and he still hasn't had the test matches but he seems to fit right in to international cricket made his debut in test cricket when Desmond Haynes was injured in the last test against England in Antigua Maple open with Simmons he's doing the same thing here now and Simmons collects another boundary Another short and wide ball for Simmons. Phil Simmons made his debut for the West Indies way back in 1987 in the World Cup here in India and Pakistan when Gordon Greenwich was unavailable. playing a rather more correct shot this time. A lot of matches there for Manoj Prabhaka. 111 in all. 5 for 35, that is at Sri Lanka, against Sri Lanka at Hyderabad on a wicket that was doing something. He bowled an excellent opening spell there. Very, very handy cricketer for India. Not on that occasion though, he's given Simmons some width and the big man loves it, he's cracked it square probably his favourite area on the wicket, Simmons and that one was, was clear, was going to be four all along it's good to see the way Simmons just shifted the weight from front foot to back foot there tending to come forward on most deliveries Phil Simmons, but that one short enough and wide enough for him to just go back and punch it past point very good shot. Up in the air, there's a man under it, and Manoj Prabhaka takes the catch, and Chetan Sharma must be delighted. Catch for Prabhaka, end of Stuart Williams, and West Indies have lost their first wicket, and Michael Chetan Sharma must be convinced now that there's some justice in this world. Well, he must be a very delighted man, having another nightmare start here in the second game that he has played, but he has gotten a wicket. Stuart Williams attempting the hook again. We see Stuart Williams attempting that shot on quite a few occasions and he's not a very good hooker. Ball just spooning up in the air. Tabaka at short mid wicket goes back. Takes a comfortable catch over his shoulders. So Stuart Williams depart. The best thing are one down for 47 in the 10th over. Brian Lara, an awesome record ahead of him. Tends to follow him everywhere not the brightest of days today and Simmons decides to take the initiative kept quiet for four balls and was out almost as the bowler was bowling and cracked the ball in his favorite area yes Simmons using his feet there Shatan Sharma had started to develop that very good length and line just on the off stump Danger is gone. Come play the fielder. And all sorts of, of confusion on Kumble. The dead eye dick of the Indian team uprooting the stumps. And the dangerous Phil Simmons is run out. Well, 
Simmons really had no chance after he was sent back by Lara. Lara hit that ball and started to run. But as soon as he saw that the ball was rushing towards Kumble, he stopped in his tracks, but that did not give, as you can see, Phil Simmons any chance of getting back. It was a matter of Kumble hitting or missing. Kumble hit, and so Simmons is run out for 32, and the West Indians have lost their second wicket for 67. Form bats, one of the West Indies team comes in with need for him to show that form now. They've lost both openers for 67. with that tremendous innings which almost clinched victory for the West Indies at Bizag single-handedly on Monday so it didn't go where he wanted it to go Lara but he's got it back past the bowler's head and it'll go for four Tendulkar made a brave a slightly funny attempt to get there Lara gets four Still not really the vintage Lara. That ball attempting to hit it through the offside. And it actually went straight back. Not very well timed either. Went back in the air. Hooper's gone for the single. If it hits, he's gone, he's gone. Jadidia has struck. This is disaster for the West Indies. Unbelievable stuff. Carl Hooper just kept running, no response from Lara, and a tremendous throw from Jadeja. Couldn't have had too much more than one stump to aim at. Very difficult to know exactly what's happening over there with the calling, but again, that was very, very poor cricket. A lot of indecisiveness between both men, both Lara and Hooper taking a few steps down. Nobody deciding exactly what the situation was until it was too late. Very good throw by Jadeja. Hooper had no chance of getting back at all. It's 77 for 3 West Indies. So Keith Alderton walking in with the West Indies inning. It's looking like it's derailed a bit. Just kidding off track. After an opening partnership of 47. Keith Alderton walking into something of a crisis. Interestingly, when he's bowling, the fielders tend to hit the stumps. He might want to hit them once himself. Very fine down on the onside. When the ball goes there, it's got to be four runs. You, never, you can't keep a fielder as fine as that. And Lara picks up four more. Tremendous shot by Alderton. Found the gap perfectly. Right to the pitch of the ball. Everything right above that shot. Yes, Kumble had been bowling just on that midland leg line. But that occasion string outside Arthurton's off stump. Only four fielders on the offside. So lots of gaps and Arthurton found one. played fine once again runs coming for the West Indies in this over there's a big over three boundaries came off it with Kumle straying just a bit on that occasion very expensive over there that for Kumle few balls outside the Austin and then that one strained down the leg side very expensive indeed the West Indies very happy with that over they have been finding things very tight out there indeed. And look at those figures of Kumble. Just the one bad over and he has bowled 5 for 25. Oh, glorious shot. That really is a typical Brian Lara stroke. Out of the very top drawer. Oh, absolutely no question about that. Everything right about that shot. The head the foot right to the pitch of the ball, the follow through absolutely perfect
flicked away and that's placed as well and a very good save by Cambly pulling it back from inside the boundary at full stretch and that's a very good bit of fielding yes he judged it well he knew that he wouldn't be able to stop it but yes. on the run he pushed it back in and they've got batting these two are in and approaching a century partnership came together went together when the score was 77 Lara has put that one away and it's gone for six so more and more now the impression that Brian Lara is back in the right frame of mind yes, he's picked that spot very well there's a big gap there between yeah. deep mid wicket and long gone and he's hitting it with the turn lucky to get that umpire must give the batsman nerves here because as the appeal goes up switches the pebble from one pocket to the other you think perhaps he may be raising the finger this time he's gone he does raise the finger and a good catch by Monge he had to go a long way for it for the rebound and uh, a good catch taken and the umpire's finger is raised and the West Indies have lost with Keith Arthur and caught by Mongia of Raju for 27 well, that's a terrific catch because you have to go a long long way the ball did loop up in the air but still for Mongia he had to come from around the wicket and go for it Arthurton not happy with the decision and indicating that the ball might have come off his leg guards but the umpire was very confident he raised his finger almost immediately after the appeal was made so the West Indians have lost their fourth wicket for 168 oh that's a great shot magnificently placed he had to keep it straight to beat the mid on and also to beat the long off four runs to Lara yes the mid on was in the circle and the ball coming into Lara Lara waiting for that ball just a fraction he's got it away he'll go for four fractionally short from Raju And while West Indian batsmen are known for their powerful shots, what distinguishes Lara is the fact that he can play delicate shots like this. Well, the loud shot was coming. He's been given out. Lara's gone. Just gives himself a wry little smile as Mungia flicks the bales. Kumble gets the wicket on his first over on Rico. The West Indies have lost their key man. Yes, Lara needed to stay at the crease for as long as possible. Perhaps down into the 45th, 46th over. But on that occasion, driving and perhaps just losing his balance to a ball just outside the off stump. So he might have wanted the umpire to consult the third umpire again, but of course this time not making the signal satisfied with the decision made immediately by the umpire and is going off the field a very good inning here by Brian Lara as I said before not the true vintage Lara that we saw earlier on in the Caribbean but perhaps he's on his way back certainly looked good while he was in Brian Lara and the crowd been delighted they can go back and remember forever but Brian Lara came to Cuttack and got a good score but good work by Nain Mungia to dismiss Lara yes here you see Brian Lara's foot going out of the crease he's trying to get it back at that point he's just about on the line if the bales are taken off at that point he's out and there you see the stumps being broken his foot is 
just about getting back just about getting back very very close indeed perhaps the umpire should have consulted the third umpire and as you can have a good look there at Chandler Paul's bat he's obviously looking for a new bat contract there's absolutely no markings at all on that bat well he's gone the LBW umpire Jay Prakash in the picture again Jared was bowling round the wickets coming into the left hander and sticker or no sticker on it Chandler Paul's bat didn't have much work to do there Yes, it, perhaps if he did have something on the bat, he would have been able to get an inside edge. But he missed completely. And if we take a good look at this, we'll see that the ball certainly was coming from outside the off stump. Chandra Paul had his leg outside the line of off stump first and then just pulled it back in line with off stump in his attempt to play at that delivery through the midwicket region. Missed it and Westerns are 192 for six in the best of positions now Roland Holder the only recognized batsman left and that shot certainly not necessary at all Tabaka taking a very very comfortable catch Weston is now 202 for 7 with all of eight and a half overs to go Andy Cummins has done a bit with the bat in the series interestingly coming to in to bat at number nine today that's the lowest he's batted for the West Indies for a long time since we pushed up to number six to keep the runs going but his first objective now Michael would surely be to stay with the holder and play as many overs to the West Indies as possible yes I think the crowd's been giving him a bit of a hard time every time he goes back to the position at the long leg that's gone. Chambly is under it, but he won't get it. It goes over the boundary for Sid and that's a good hit by Holder. It's also no ball. And Holder clearing the boundary. Well, maybe Azar has kept Jadeja on for just a little bit too long. Jadeja now lapsing in, in his length. He's bowling a good line in length to the left-handers. He's given him leg before. Attempting a sweep. And uh, the umpire's finger sending Cummins on his way to Comble. The eighth wicket gone. Umpire Kurushingo just confirming Comble's appeal. Andy Cummins had been trying to work Comble down on the leg side. This one, he plunked his left foot way out outside the off stump, but he got hit not on the left foot so much as the back of the thigh, and it looked in line with the off stump. Question D228 for eight. Courtney Walsh, that highest score of his, will be remembered by him and by everyone who saw it for a long time it was in a losing cause there was no way the West Indies were going to gain anything as far as the result was concerned from that score but some massive sixes as we all remember in the Wills World Series final at Eden Gardens on Saturday night he comes in now a few massive sixes would be welcomed by the West Indies but it's a completely different situation Well, he's bowled him, or so they say. Courtney Walsh is waiting for an umpire's decision. He's given him out. So Holder watches on at the non striker's end. Uh, Walsh watches on from the opposite end. They both look at the umpire, and the umpire raises a finger. And a flipper from Tumble has struck. And this is the classic instance of the batsman not knowing anything about that delivery. And although his off stump has been pegged back, 
Fort New Walls still didn't know what had happened. Just glancing the off stump. <laughs> well, he's looking quizzically at the wicket keeper. But there the ball is hitting the off stump, you can see very clearly. Again, that's a fine stroke by Cuffey. Well, you could tell from the time he came out. We were talking about Brian Lara today. Uh, completely different thing altogether as far as their batsmanship is concerned. But he's come out and he looked eager from the very beginning. He looked as if he wanted to bat. Well, I think all bowlers fancy themselves as batsmen. And Cuffey now, after this effort, is entitled to go up to his captain and ask for a promotion. That's the trouble with them, though, of course. They now get overconfident, and they'll try something now extravagant. That's not a bad-looking shot, either. It's gone right through the fielder, and he's got another boundary. Well, to Chetan Sharma's legs. And they run the bye. Umpire hasn't signaled it, but we'll take it for granted that it was. If it wasn't, in fact, he was, would have been out. So the West Indies innings completed at 251 for nine with a very useful last wicket partnership, mainly engineered by this man, the number 11 Cameron Cuffey. West Indies. Batting first after Courtney Walsh won the toss. A match here they must win to keep their hopes alive in the series. India lead 2-1 with two matches remaining. This and the one in Jaipur on Friday. Brian Lara's 89 being the top score. And perhaps the most significant event of the day will be that because it certainly got him back in the average in limited overs cricket of over 30 in limited overs cricket if you have an average over 30 it's considered a good average and Sidhu's absence certainly will be a blow to India century maker in the last match and Jadeja on the way with the boundary Sachin Tendulkar, very good record there. He's 88. One day international, this one. Gorgeous shot by Tendulkar. Lend into that cover drive, fired it to the boundary for four. Very shot of the inning so far for India. And Tendulkar is in good form, and that's just about the first bad ball or really bad ball that Cameron Coffey has bowled. Too much up to Tendulkar. He didn't have to play through the line. That was a half volley. Very neutral innings this from Tendulkar. Normally likes to fire away, but today he's very, very restrained. For the second time he's done that. Every time I say he's restrained, he's cracking the boundary, and that is as good as they come. The moment he gets just a bit of width, Tendulkar's going after the bowling. Tremendous shot at it. Again, making sure that he takes advantage of the bad ball, Tendulkar. Too short, too wide. Timing that time was perfect. Andy Cummins. Interestingly, everyone seems to record their best performance against India, Michael. 5 for 31 at Brisbane. away by Tendulkar. You give this man just a bit of wit and you might as well put the four runs on the scoreboard yourself. 
tremendous shot. The Mills are coming into zone now. By Miles. But you've got to hit the stumps first. Yes, Walsh was uh, on to it quickly, very quickly. In fact, he's standing well inside the circle, so he knows that the Indian batsmen are going to try and look for the quick single. And see how close he is to the stumps, but he missed it. And Jarija was not even in the picture then, when the ball went past the stumps. That's gone down the ground, over his head, a big six. Well, they picked it up well. I think the Indians now realizing that uh, apart from the single, they also need the odd boundary or a six up. So with the quicker bowlers not pitching the ball up, they've decided to go for it against Carl Hooper, the spinner. That's a big one as well. It's going to go for another six. So two sixes in the over of Carl Hooper. And all of a sudden, the Indian graph starts to climb level with the West Indies. Let's go thinking there by Ajay Jadeja. The ball's pitched up in the slot for the shot. He's hit it with the turn. Straight back past him. Superb stroke. Well, Cummins pitching it up now. He's been bowling short of a good length. And Tendulkar hitting it very straight. An absolutely safe shot, although it was uppish. And that's a huge hit. Doesn't quite go all the way, but it's well over the top. He gets to his half century and India have begun to really demolish the West Indies bowling here. The second string bowlers have come in for punishment. What does Walsh do now? And another brilliant half century for the young man there. And after the two ducks, he really has come into his own. that boundary another half century he finds the edge here although Jadeja was looking for it somewhere in that region and it's four more so the hundred is raised in the 22nd over and India really have now begun to put enormous pressure on the West Indies. Walsh has had seven overs, but he may just consider bringing himself back in here. It'll be a gamble, but he needs just to tighten things up. Jadeja gets his 50. With those two runs on the offside, Jadeja and Tendulkar showing what a successful opening partnership they are forging. For India, this is their third consecutive uh, partnership of over 100. Very well placed by Tendulkar. Really had such a lot of time to play that shot. Merely scooped it just where he wanted to. Almost as if he was pointing out to someone in the crowd over there. And he got four runs. Super shot out to someone in the crowd over there and he got four runs super shot and Tenduka continues he must be seeing the ball just over there he's just putting his left foot down Michael to just about anything if 
Andy Cummins bowled it on his feet, it still go forward. He's so much in command at the moment. And that's four more. Not too far from Junior Murray in the end, and the frustration on Andy Cummins' face tells, tells the story. Pendulka's going for everything, but didn't quite go where he wanted it to, but he got four all the same. Well, that's the nature of this one-day game. You don't always get the ball to go exactly where you want them to go. So as you can see, the lead bowlers, Walsh, Cuffey and Cummins, between them have got very few overs left. Cummins, in fact, has been expensive, but Walsh and Cuffey, only five overs between them, which means that the rest of the bowling has to carry on, Michael, until the 45 over mark, unless Walsh wants to make a little assault and try and get a wicket mid some wickets midway through. Well, Chandrapal is now getting the treatment from Tendulkar after that impressive first over. It brings up the 150 for India in only the 30th over. This is excellent going. And then dropping short. One for six. Oh, an experience here by Chandrapal on doing all the good work that he had done before with that long hop. Yes, he tried to bowl it too slow, but ended up pitching it very, very short. With 15 overs remaining, India 175 without last the refreshment break has given the West Indies. He's bowled him. Simmons has bowled Tendulkar playing over the top. So that record between Shrikan and Shastri remains unbeaten and Tendoka goes for 88. And I can't believe what's happened because he's looking so well set but I think the problem was that Sachin Tendulkar had got himself into a frame of mind where he was looking for the ones and the twos rather than trying to attack the bowling. Perhaps the previous over from Cameron Cuffey had planted uh, those doubts in his mind. But here he was trying to push the ball away for a single. Playing right across, you see, and missing. Giving Simmons the important wicket. That's the first Indian wicket down for 176. Well, Vinod Campbell has been sent at number three. Ashwin had himself down there originally. Of course, there's a lot of flexibility in the limited overs games and Vinod Kambli the left-hander the age of 22 in his 51st one day international here and he will come in to face Phil Simmons who just got that wicket oh that's a great stroke that's four runs that's the second ball he's faced and it looked as if it was 100. Well, that's the shot of a man who is in form. He's standing up outside the crease and hitting it on the up. It's a terrific shot. Very good going. And Kamli is open his shoulder now. That's four runs. He really does seem to play the shot very well. He's not hitting it hard. He's just pointing, he's just giving a direction to the ball. In my word, isn't he timing it well? <laughs> Big landmark this for Jadija. He cuts it and he gets there with a good shot. In fact, carry to the line. And isn't he delighted? First century in one day internationals for Ajay Jadija. He's fallen short a couple of times, but he is absolutely delighted. And what a great return to the opening slot it's been for him. Since he came back into the team, I've been very impressed with his batting. Finally has gotten the landmark. Three figures in a one day international. Another very, very good innings by Jadija. Got him.
straight to Cameron Cuffey on the edge of the circle there and Courtney Walsh has provided the breakthrough that the West Indies so desperately needed Ajay Jadija playing a very curious shot it's not always that you see a catch being taken there at short fine leg of the quicker man but Jadija played it straight down there it cannot take away Michael from the fact that he's done his job for India yes I would think that he certainly has not done his job finally going in the four the fourth over but certainly a very very good innings here by Jadija if India lose from here it certainly won't be his fault And look at that record 5095 runs 108 not out against Sri Lanka being his best innings in this format of the game and he's in tremendous form well just a little edge we'll get him anywhere they come and that takes four more off what India required and reduces their target now to less than 20. They've obviously decided to go after Carl Hooper. Not very sure that they can do it against uh, Courtney Walsh. Well, the Indians haven't even worried to bring their till in. The top bats have done their job all the way through the series. Generally speaking, the bowlers have also done theirs. Yes, I think it's been a real team effort uh, from the Indian side. They've really come on after the Faridabad game. The West Indians had a very comprehensive win in the Farida, Faridabad game. And that must have made the Indian team think tank look long and hard at the composition of their team they brought in Jadeja to replace Bedade not only because he could bowl a bit which he did only today but because he was a brilliant fielder and which would have meant that he would be saving about 20 odd runs in the field but then he's come on so well as an opening batsman is being lit in anticipation of an Indian victory we now come down to the last over they just require two runs to win the match in the last over and in my recollection there's only been one instance in the history of one day internationals where that few runs have been required of the last over and they haven't been got that was Australia against New Zealand in Hobart Tasmania when just one run in fact was needed off, off the last over for Australia to win and Bruce Reed, not the best of number 11s couldn't get even that run don't think the same thing is going to happen here this man Mohammed Ashwedin is no Bruce Reed. so Cummins it will be all the fielders in to prevent the single and all it needs is a, a boundary Scores are level now. All those torches and fireworks going off really what tilted the match were the explosions out in the middle from the Indian batsmen between overs number 15 and 25 and more especially overs number 20 and 25 which took the West Indies completely by surprise tremendous assault launched on them now India within one of victory and there it is India have won by eight wickets 
With four balls to spare. A 3-1 lead in a five-match series. And they have clinched with this victory the Pepsi series. There's still one match to go. That'll be a consolation game in Jaipur on Friday when the teams will be playing for pride and a bit of a restoration for the Indian. And you've been seeing all afternoon Jadija with one of the really outstanding performances in one day international cricket. 104 to follow his 2 for 53 from 10 overs. 127 deliveries. His assault on Hooper really set things off. Tendoka with 88 once more just confirming what a class player he is and what type of form he is in at the present time. And in the end it really was just a jog for Cambly and Azradin to win the match. They won with four balls to spare but they always had the game in hand.